night. Greetings to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that again that I found you well, your household, your family, and I speak blessings of life and peace and healing virtue of Christ our Lord rest upon you in every way that you exist, that the grace of God is abounding towards you, your home, your family, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. May you experience this continuously over your life. Tonight, I welcome you here to Glory to God Ministry Church Pavilion in Pensacola, Florida. With delight, I stand to share the gospel and teaching. I'm excited about our PowerPoint tonight. We'll be talking and sharing with you so you can see in more of a visual uh, the metaphor of things that we talked about as not necessarily do we talk literally, but figuratively speaking, and a lot of the examples from the Bible. And before we get started into that, I would like to like, take time to let you know that we are going to be having our communion service on the last Sunday of March. Uh, so I ask everyone to prepare your hearts and minds as we prepare to take part of the Lord's body. And he encouraged his followers to, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So our team will be coming the last Sunday of this month, the fourth Sunday, to do our communion with us. So prepare your hearts and minds. Uh, make sure things are right. Do not take part of the Lord's Supper unworthy. Make sure there's repentance. Make sure there's an acknowledgement. We are a people who serve God and reverence and respect his body. We are not to take part of it. If you're not saved, I encourage you not to take part of the communion. This is for those who is in blood covenant relationship. So prepare our hearts for the last Sunday of this month that we will have a communion together as the body of Christ. So prepare to join us and get your, 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 your sacraments together and everything that is needed, please do so so we can enjoy it all at once. All right, thank you. Now we want to continue tonight, and we're going to start in our Bible study tonight, reminding us of Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. I'm just going to allude to it. We've been talking about it. And in Matthew 6, 22, it talks about a single eye. And it talks about an evil eye. So tonight, in our PowerPoint, I want you to get your pad and paper and read it together and that you'll get a chance to see the PowerPoint with us and take notes. And tonight, as we talk about a single eye, in Matthew 6, 22, a single eye consists of, in the Greek word, it's the Greek word for single. I want you to get the word single. Hoplos, H-A-P-L-U-S. Hoplos, that's the Greek word. And that word means whole, sound, whole. Sound. This have to do with a single, the word single. And you and I are to be learned concerning what the word single means. I defines in the Greek, othelmos, othelmos. I defines in the Greek, othelmos, as eye of the mind. It's the faculty of knowing. It's the faculty of knowing. That's what the eye is all about. Is your faculty of knowing, having a knowing, having a knowledge, having knowledge of. So when the, when the eye, which is the mind, is a sound eye, a sound mind, then great and mighty things happen when your mind is a sound mind. The dark world cannot influence a single eye. A single eye is committed to God. It's an eye that is sacred and set aside. An eye defines as a mind, which again, the Greek word is ophthalmos. Ophthalmos, again, is the Greek word for the eye of the mind. Eye of the mind. So when the eye, which is of the mind, the faculty of knowing, when your mind knows things, when you know the gospel, you know the truth, you know in study, because your eye or your mind is being in a committed transformation according to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind is that place of reasoning, the faculty of learning and knowledge. 
So I wanted to give you this PowerPoint so you could see in the Greek what the word single mean. What the word uh, uh, in Greek mean for single is hoplos. So have a hop, hoplos, meaning a whole sound eye, a whole sound mind. Paul told Timothy, God have not given you the spirit of fear, or us the spirit of fear, but he's given us love, power, a sound mind, the emotional state, the psychological state, and all of our faculties of our mind as we reason with intelligence concerning the doctrine. This is why we study. We study. So we study with a single eye, with a sound eye, a whole sound complete eye. We study with a, so, a whole sound complete mind. Your mind is supposed to be a mind that have knowledge. It's the eye of the mind, where the mind will always be used to know you have a body, but you are a soul, a spirit, and a heart that lives in a body. So keep that in mind, that you have a body, but you're not a body. What you are, you and I are a spirit, a mind, and a soul. So I just want to share that with you, and I pray you're taking time to get what we mean when we talk about a single I, and what the word single means. When I look at you, you look at me as fellow brethren and sisters in Christ, I'm looking at a people of a single I, meaning that your I is whole and sound, meaning your mind, you are of a sound mind. You are of a whole, complete, sound you. When you think with the I, with the mind, that it is you thinking with knowledge, and I'll give the sevenfold anointing next, with the knowledge that is important. So in the PowerPoint, we'll look at the I again. Let's go now to our next slide. Here's what I mean by the seven eyes, a single eye with the seven eyes. And I'm using this eye as a metaphor. It's not literally an eye, but it is the mind. As I said on Sunday, the world teaches of a third eye. The kingdom of God teaches us of a single eye. Single means a whole sound mind. I, as in the faculty of knowing and reasoning, each and every day our minds are used. Our minds are processing knowledge. And we'll look at what our mind as believers in Christ, believers who are in a binding relationship, who's yoked up with God through Christ Jesus. You, you guys remember it. Jesus says, take my yoke and learn of me. Become informed, become educated of as it relates to me, meaning Christ our Lord. Because it's going to always be his voice that's going to be in your mind. His voice will be revealed and made known. So now let's walk through the sevenfold anointing that this anointing rests in your eye, which is the mind. This anointing consists of fear. There's a reverential respect that you will hold in your eye, which is in your mind. Holy and reverence is his name. That's important that we understand. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. Fear means there's a reverential respect for God when he sees the spirit of fear that is smeared in your eye. The word anointed means to be, sub it means to smear. And so smearing in here is to understand that he's to rub and cover your mind. He's to rub and cover your mind. A term called besmear. He besmeared my mind. He anointed my mind. He anointed my eye. So you and I can walk with a single eye, which means a sound mind. A sound minded person, a whole, complete, sound, intelligent you having a sound mind, a faculty of knowing, having knowledge of fear. Fear is one of the eyes that's in your eye. Fear is important because with fear, you regard, you respect God, your Father. You regard, you respect the voice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they would not follow. So there's a fear called the spirit of fear, which is two types of fear. This fear, for us in Christ with a single eye, this fear 
lines our hearts and minds up to regard or respect reverentially the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We respect what is written. We respect the apostles' writing. We respect the doctrine. That's the first single, that's the first eye of the single eye. The next eye is called might. Well, we call it eyes, and I'll reveal that some more, because here, let me do it like this. The second one is going to be might. We call it the spirit of might. That's going to be in line with Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. The spirit of might, which is power, a deutimus. Your eye and what's smeared inside of your mind and your heart and your soul, that your mind has a spirit of might. Might defines as power a deutimus. Mean you have the power or the authority to walk and to move and to do God's will. You have the might or strength to move about effectively in every capacity in which you live in. You will move about with the spirit of might which is power, which is strength. That's what might is all about. So this is one of your eyes. When you wake up in the morning, you go throughout the day, you don't walk about as a weakling. You don't walk around as someone who's not been empowered. He gave us power over the power of the enemy. He gave us strength to resist the devil. He gave us the power to rebuke the devil. It's so much that the spirit of might, you and I need to embrace and understand because you will go in the strength of the Lord. You will walk with this might. Difficult time. You will walk with the spirit of might. This anointing is in your eye, which is your mind. So my mind always see the spirit of might. Every day, I see the spirit of might or the spirit of strength to do God's will. You, you ask for it every day. Lord, give me a fresh anointing in my spirit, man, that I can wax strong in spirit, in the spirit of fear, in the spirit of might. The next one is called the spirit of understanding. Understanding is basically God give divine instruction to his children. All of us move about with an understanding. The Bible teaches us in all of our getting, get an understanding. So this is one of the anointings that you have that has been given to you a, it's be smeared upon your mind. It's be smeared means it covers your mind. It covers your faculty of knowing. Therefore, it makes you be a sound-minded you, a sound you. That's why Paul said to Timothy that God didn't give him the spirit of fear because there was a spirit of fear that had smeared on him that did not come from the Holy Ghost or the Prince of Peace. And we talked on Sunday. Understanding these pieces because it's important that we know in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul had to get on to Peter because, I'm sorry, Paul had to get on to Timothy because Timothy was struggling with a fear that was not given to him by the Lord. And that's why you want to watch out. When you begin to walk with anxieties, you begin to walk uh, with these uh, uh, worries and and. and Day in and day out, you're you're stressing over things. You're worrying about things. You're overwhelmed by things. No, calm down. You say, no, this is too tormenting. This is too much of a torment because God gives good and perfect gifts. God gives us the strength to endure, to overcome. The Bible actually says in Romans that we are more than conquerors through Christ. We are more than a conqueror. The next one would be the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is what you're in agreement with, is what you're yoked up with. This is the seven eyes in your one eye, in your one mind. So the spirit of wisdom is the divine faculty that shows you how to do whatever needs to be done on any level. The the divine wisdom of God shows you how to do things God's way, a glorious way. Is a divine faculty called wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing for you and I to get. And wisdom will always be justified of her children. So wisdom is a faculty that your mind know. So my one mind, my one eye, have these seven eyes, and that wisdom is smeared all in my being. It's all in my mind. So therefore, my soul will rise up. Your soul will rise up and stand up and flush out or fluoresce out, or illuminate out in a divine wisdom that will be so glorious 
It will cause such a respect for you. It'll call help you help. It will be a high regard for you. So wisdom is one of the eyes that is smeared in your eye. The next one is called counsel. This is the spirit of counsel. What flows out of us is now it's called the spirit of counsel, which means the counsel is divine, meaning it's from God, it's from heaven. This counsel is simply divine advice. God is the advisor in our lives through by way of the Holy Ghost. So advice will be given divinely to you and I, and this divine advice will always cause you never to be ashamed, you'll never be embarrassed, you'll never be humiliated and put to shame because the counsel of God's word never failed. God's word never returned void. God's word always accomplished where he sent it. So that's number five. The next one we call knowledge, the spirit of knowledge. And this is how I write it when I do my studying. I put it in order. I say, the spirit of, I say the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom. Because I want you to know this is spiritual. So I have now the spirit of knowledge. Knowledge is knowledge that makes me know what I didn't know. Knowledge calls us to be educated in the things that is divine and from God. Knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the truth. You shall know the, the truth by knowledge. You should know all that is to know about God by knowledge. You are to know the revelation of the mystery of the kingdom by knowledge. So it's important that you ask every day for the sevenfold anointing, and in this you will be looking for the spirit of knowledge will rest upon your mind. That's number six. Number seven. Now, I wrote them the way I wrote them, but you'll go back and you'll see in Isaiah chapter 11, it says the Spirit of the Lord. That's how it's written out. But in the PowerPoint, I wrote it like this because I put the Spirit of the Lord because that's the first anointing that brings forth all of the fullness of completion of the Holy Ghost. When someone say they're full, filled with the Holy Spirit, we grew up thinking because they were shouting that that was the Holy Ghost. Uh, they was fainting and falling out. We say that was the Holy Ghost. That was not the Holy Ghost. That was an emotional moment of someone expressing their joy. That was an emotional moment of someone going through a trial or tribulation. But that was not. Fainting and shouting is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what I'm revealing that he comes in in the sovereignty of his strength and power to reveal the things of God to us using what we call the sevenfold anointing. So when believers talk and move about and behave and conduct ourselves, you will see the fear of God upon their life. They don't say no anything. They don't act any kind of way. They don't misconduct because there's a reverential respect for God. I don't care where they're at, what they're going through, they won't open their mouth and speak idle speaking because there's a reverential respect for what is written. As you grow and develop, you will put away childish things. You and I will put away behaviors and conduct because there's a respect for what is written. Every day I wake up with a respect that has helped me to grow up and to develop into the person that I am today. So keep in mind, this is a sevenfold anointing for a reason. So the reason why you and I have all sevenfold of these eyes, one eye, single, means sound, whole. I define as the faculty of the mind that knows things. So what do I know? I know the fear of God. What do I know? The might of God. I know the understanding of God. I know the wisdom of God. I know the counsel of God. I know the knowledge of God in the Holy Ghost. Because everything that I have and you have is in the Holy Ghost. Your peace is in the Holy Ghost. Your joy is in the Holy Ghost. The righteousness that you live in is in the Holy Ghost. So therefore, we have the Holy Spirit right at the bottom of this eye, so you can see who's smeared on you. So this is important, because you understand if the body, the light of the body is the eye. So the light of intelligence, this is intelligence that you're learning about in Matthew 6, 22. Amen? So I want to give you another piece before I go on. And let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, and let's start at verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, and I've given you Revelation 5 and 6 in the PowerPoint. 
I've given you Isaiah 11 and 2, so you can understand where I get my doctrine from that have changed my life, empowered me to be who I am today in Christ Jesus, living without a sad story. This is an anointing on my life, and God our Father will that you have this same anointing on your life, in your home, in your marriage, whatever you're doing, no sad stories. We have trials and tribulation like everybody else. We have sickness and diseases like everyone else. But you'll find throughout this anointing, it's going to help you to always be in a sound mind. You notice Job, he went through, but he maintained a sound mind. His body was afflicted, but he had a sound single eye. His understanding, his wisdom, his counsel, his understanding uh, uh, of knowledge, and all of the faculties of his eye was simply amazing to me. When I say, how did Job stand? because he had a single eye. He had a sound mind. In his affliction, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord bless me. He'll be with me. He understood those things. He, he understood that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job was called a perfect man. Job was simply called a man that was sound. He was mature. He was complete. He wasn't indignant, erratic, act out of conduct. No, he didn't. He was of a single eye. And I like using Job. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, because I want to give you a little bit more concerning the eyes. This is what Paul says to the Ephesian people. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. And I believe that I'm talking to you who have faith, who have an agreement, who know that you're saved, who know that you're born again, who know that you're reaching for the mark of the high call of God. I'm talking to that type of people who made up their mind to be in the fear of God, to be in the might of God, to be in the understanding of God. He says, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. I'm asking God for things for you. He said that, this is what I'm asking for, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom. There it is. Right here, Paul is writing about it. He said, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Here's two eyes right here. Wanting them to grow and to develop and have the spirit of wisdom, which is a divine faculty that is smeared in your mind. So with this intelligence, you will have revelation or revealed knowledge of the mystery of the kingdom. All the things that are hidden from the, from the left eye and the right eye, but is not hidden from your single eye. And that single eye is smeared with an anointing of seven. And in this, he says, I'm praying for you that you may, uh, that he may give unto you, may release unto you or impart unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. When you meet the body of Christ, we walk with the revelation and the wisdom and the knowledge of him. We have a knowing of him by way of a sevenfold anointing. He went on to say this, verse 18. This is the one I want you to get. He said, the eyes of your understanding. That go the word eyes. He's not talking about the left eye and the right eye. He's talking about all seven faculties that is to be working in your mind, in your single eye. He said the eyes of your understanding. He didn't say the eyes of your left side and your right side. He's not talking physically. He's talking metaphorically. He's talking in a way that you and I need to understand there's eyes that you need to be enlightened. Once there's an enlightenment, there's an illumination. That's why we, we are talking about a single eye, and I'm excited about having a single eye as though the world, when they get excited, those who practice uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, when they practice that, they tap into what they call a third eye through meditation. Again, teaching you to get excited in your relationship with God as a people of faith, a people of fidelity that you will understand having a single eye, a sound mind. And when your mind is sound, you are very powerful. When your mind is sound, the Bible says that they that keep their minds stayed upon the Lord, 
he will keep them in perfect peace. It's a blessing and a benefit when you can remain sound, unmoved, fixed in the position of your faith. So, he says, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So this thing that you and I need to know, I'm not going to spend more time with this, but I wanted you to see that I'm supporting the eyes. Jesus had seven eyes. That's why I have him here. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. If you took notes of the PowerPoint, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, where you will see that Christ our Lord had seven eyes. He had a sevenfold anointing smeared on him. Therefore, he could look at things and know it with knowledge. He knew God was his father. He knew that God had not left him. He had full understanding, and he had a commitment of a legion of faith to God his father. So now we are learning from Christ our Lord in every way of the doctrine as it's written, that you need to fully understand having a single eye. So when you read the gospel, Matthew 6, 22, 23, 24, and understanding that this message is a profound message to the body of Christ, that you and I need to understand, I have a single eye. I have a whole sound mind. My mind, my faculty, my understanding, my comprehension is smeared on with a sevenfold anointing. So guess what? I have fear, a reverence of God, not dread, not, not a dread of God. I have a reverential respect for God, my Father. Fear is important that you re respect and revere the Lord because it's going to bring about a behavior. I don't care what you're going through. Your behavior will always exhibit and display a connection with God because you have the revelation of the hope of the expectation. Because, see, he had a hope of the calling. He had a hope that an expectation of him delivering me that I would be a glorious church. And I love being a glorious church. I love being elegant in my behavior. I love being elegant in my word. I understand having a white garment without spot. Every day, growing and reaching for such a level with that sevenfold anointing that is smeared on me and is supposed to be smeared on you. Yes, you and I are supposed to be filled with God's spirit and growing and waxing strong in spirit and in stature, just like Christ did. Now, let us go because I want us to see the next piece because the eyes also have fruit, have a fruit that brings about ingredients. So the next piece in our understanding is that you and I, having seven eyes, that one eye Seven eyes with nine different fruit. Nine fruits. You're going to find this in Galatians 5, 22, 23. My eye have seven eyes, and I have nine different fruit. Now, I'm going to kind of go back and forth because you notice the single eye and the fruit of the Spirit. It has no S on it. The fruit of the Spirit as it relates to the Spirit that's over my life. The Spirit of the Lord, the Prince of peace that's over my life, over your life. Your eye, your mind is under the leadership of the Prince of Peace. This is why he says in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. They hear my conversation. They hear my knowledge. They hear my understanding. They hear my wisdom. They hear the reverential respect. And a stranger they would not follow. Because, see, there's a behavior that you and I are supposed to always be found in through by the fruit of the Spirit. So take note of this PowerPoint and get, it all, get them all written down because your eye now will begin to walk with peace. Well, you're going to walk with peace because you have knowledge. That's one of your anointing. I have knowledge of the peace of God. Knowledge of the peace. So when you look at knowledge... How is it that I walk with knowledge? I will walk with knowledge with the fruit of the Spirit, which give nine ingredients, peace, temperance. Temperance is a self-control. Yes, temperance is a self-control, gentleness, meekness, joy, love, goodness, long-suffering, and faith. All of these things is a part of your new divine nature. So therefore, 
being born again, you and I get a chance to understand peace, temperance, gentleness and meekness, joy. We get a chance to understand love and goodness and long-suffering and faith. All these things is a part of your faculty now. So when I wake up every morning, I understand I operate with the knowledge that gives me the understanding of faith. So I have instruction about faith. I have instruction about faith. And here's an example. Jesus says that you have faith as much as the grain of a mustard seed. You can speak to a mountain and say to that mountain. You see the knowledge? See, the, the, everything will line up with knowledge. Everything will line up with wisdom. And you will understand how to conduct a day of living, a night of living. You will understand how to go out and how to come in with the spirit of wisdom. Because wisdom will help you to understand through by knowledge how to long suffer, how to suffer long in trouble, suffering in conflict, suffering in pain. He'll show us how to do it by way of knowledge. Remember Job. Job suffered through the storm. He suffered through financial loss. He suffered through the death of his children. But he did it with a reverence of God. Miss Job had a different eye. Miss Job said, God, Job, do you retain your integrity? Now, let me use this right quick. Um, no, I won't go there yet. I, I want to show you Job in the contrast of Job and Miss Job. What Job said and what Miss Job said. Job's mind was so sound. Job blessed the Lord. Job shaved his head and sat down and humbled himself and sat cloth and ashes and said, blessed be the name of the Lord. See how sound his mind is? He's not bitter. He's not mad. He's not upset. What a student of God. What a follower of God. Church, all the play play we've been doing, we make a lot of sounds. We make a lot of pretty stuff. But we have been a people who have wars and fighting among us. We've been a people who I has really been a, 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 a double mind. And that's what James talks about issues in the, in the body that he was talking to. He says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways because he's trying to go with two minds. And with the two minds, two eyes. So when you walk in joy, well, counsel shows me how to stay in agreement and stay bound to God and walk in joy. Joy meaning that God is my greatest happiness. God is my joy, not my money. Joy is one thing you need to understand. Joy is my God. My greatest happiness is God. Now, what we do, we enjoy everything else. Listen at me. You will enjoy your house. You will enjoy your car. You will enjoy your family. You will enjoy your mother. You will enjoy your wife. You will enjoy your children, but they are not your joy. Only God can always be joy, your greatest happiness. So I have the knowledge of that now. And I remember me and my wife of 36 years now. I believe I got it right. 36 or 30, somewhere in there. Uh, but I remember being bitter and upset with her when we had moments, and I wouldn't speak for six and seven days. And I would be cold. I would have a sour touch because I wouldn't have a sound mind because I made her be my joy. When we first started our marriage relationship, my wife was the person I looked to to make me happy. I wanted her every day to be my happiness, make me happy. Rain, shine, snow, sleep, make me happy. And the Lord explained to me, she can never be your happiness, and you can never be her happiness. You can never be ongoing, 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 because you are human in your flesh. You cannot live in such a sovereign place. And I never wanted no one to be in that place. I'm your first love. I'm your greatest love. Now, he says, what you're going to do? You're going to enjoy your wife, but she's not your joy. So I had to come home and apologize to my wife and say, Phyllis, you know, I'm sorry because the Lord explained to me, I made you to be my joy. Almost, I made you to be my God. And I expected you to make me happy all the time. 
So see, all of these faculties and understanding the anointing, because once I put everybody, I put everything to this day, my wife in her proper place, my children in their proper place, all the material things in this world in its proper place. Enjoy this, but it can never become your joy. Only God can be your joy. That's why the kingdom of God consists of peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Okay? And I just went there. I want you to, sh- to see this because Miss Joel has a different eye. Her eye doesn't appear to be a single eye at all. So with the fruit of the Spirit, I'm not going to spend much time here, with the fruit of the Spirit, you'll get a chance to learn about why is it that I need the fruit of the Spirit. Well, with the sevenfold anointing, it's going to show you how to be loving, unconditional love. The love here is not human love. It's a agape love. It's an unconditional love. And you will owe no man nothing but to love him. That's why saints... When you can be bitter with a sour touch, something is wrong. What type of love do you have? It's not a divine love. See, these fruits here, all this is divineness. This is a divine love, a divine uh, goodness, a divine long-suffering. God empower us to know and do what we've never been able to do in the flesh. This is people who's born of the Spirit. Amen? Now, let's go to our next PowerPoint. The next piece I want you to get is going to be opposite of a single eye. This is the next eye. And the next eye is called the evil eye that we talked about. If the body, if the light of the body be evil, then the whole body is full of darkness. Then it says, if it be darkness, how great is the darkness. Now, if you notice, even the evil eye has an anointing. It has been besmeared upon. It's smeared. It's rubbed on. It's covered. It covers. The Bible tells us that darkness covered the earth and gross darkness the people. And in the writing of the prophecy of things, um, I won't go there, but in Isaiah it talks about darkness covers the earth, smears the earth. Darkness is the immorality, the misery of wickedness covers the earth. Then it says gross darkness, the people. Okay? Gross darkness, the people. So now, what we're looking at here is an evil eye. Hoplos. I'm sorry, uh, ophthalmos is what the eye is. It is not a single eye. This eye is actually an eye that is very carnal, uh, very hostile. Uh, it has a fear of worry, fears, and anxiety. It, it worries a lot. It, it can't trust God. It don't believe in God. It have no allegiance to God. When you find yourself worrying and doubting God, you need to check out what's in your eye. You can't rest. You can't sleep. What's fear? What's tormenting you? Remember how Timothy couldn't go into ministry? What was tormenting him? So we're going to call it a demonic fear, a demonic might. Oh, it's power. Oh, I had the power. I had the, I had the power to get mad. I had the ability to get mad. I had a demonic strength about me. When I got mad, I would walk with the spirit of might. I also walked with the understanding. And I remember one night, someone made me upset. Let me walk through this real quick, and I'm going to connect them to the nature. And then we're going to see wisdom. We've got to name it a demonic wisdom. Knowledge, demonic knowledge. Counsel, demonic knowledge. And it says the ruler of darkness. And I gave you where you're going to find that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and as well as in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, called the prince of the air. So the carnal mind is a mind that is very dark. Paul talks about to be carnal minded is death, and to be spiritual minded is life and peace. So when the eye which is the mind when it's not sound. So when the eye is not hopeless, it's not single, it's not sound, it's not whole. That means this eye or this mind is very sick, very diseased, very unhealthy. Individual will always say, there's people who say, that's a very dark person. And you can tell by the things they do. So every human being will operate under an anointing that is divine and from God, a wisdom that is divine and from God, or they will operate up under demonic influence that is demonic, it is of the earth realm, 
because the prince of the air comes through in this region, the territory of the world in which he walked up and down because we are the creatures that live in a living, breathing being, as a living, breathing being, as terrestrials. We live in a body that he seeks to find you in. Your mind lives in a body that he seeks to contact you in. Your, your, your heart lives in a body. So your spirit, soul, and mind that lives in a body. You live in a body that you can't stay in forever. So I have a body, I can't keep it forever. But I will always be a soul, spirit, and mind. That's the wholeness of us. Now, my mind being born again and your mind being born again, now there is a different anointing, which was the single eye that we gave you. Now, this eye is an evil eye. This person is unregenerated, unwashed, and unclean. But they do have fear. They have torment in their life. There's voices that they hear that torments their lives. Worries and anxieties and all types of spooky stuff go on because that's what this fear does. It torments. Then the might, the strength to do evil. They have the strength to do evil. Just in our country, in America, we've been noticing that the Asian, the, the Asian uh, population in our uh, different cities, I think California and New York, people's walking up to them and hitting them and attacking them. There's a young man, is a 75-year-old young man who is now brain dead because of an evil eye, because of a carnal mind, because it has a wisdom how to come and to make an attack. It has a knowledge of a darkness how to go out and do evil. It has a counsel and advice of how to go out and do evil. It has understanding of instruction how to go out and do evil. So they find people of agent descent, and of that, they look at the pigmentation that's in their skin, and they attack them. Well, we know what racism does. All this has to do with an evil eye. And number seven has to do with the rule of darkness. And I give you the scriptures that support what I'm saying so you can see the rule of darkness will be found. Ephesians 6 and 12, ruler of darkness. He's a territorial prince. The dark world is very organized. Don't think that Satan's kingdom is not organized. That's why it's called the kingdom of darkness. Go with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Just for a moment, I want to show you because it talks about the kingdom of darkness. We were transferred from that kingdom because in that we had this darkness that was smeared on us. Verse 13 says, who has delivered us? from the powers of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So understanding your eye, your mind is single because you've been transferred, or translated, or removed away from the kingdom, the rule and reign of a demonic ruler who would influence your eye, who would influence our mind to do evil with an understanding. We did evil with a wisdom that was demonic. That's why James talked about there was a wisdom that's from the earth realm. James chapter 3, verse 13. He said there's a wisdom that is from the earth. He says it is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Demonic, earthly. It is of the carnal state. Carnality of how this faculty of reasoning come together and play into us how to do evil, how to do wrong, okay? So, John 14, verse 30. Go there with me so you can see it for ourselves. Going to make good Bible study for you if you study. So in this, you'll understand how I get what I get and understand because scriptures, they don't fight, they don't conflict, they fit together. So in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 30, it says this. Just to support again. Because in your house, when the enemy come through, Jesus says he was talking to his disciples, he was teaching them. He said, here after I talk not much with you. I'm going I'm to minimize my conversation. I'm not going to stop talking, but I won't talk much. He said, let me tell you why. For the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. So when the demons come by, they're able to look at your eye. They're able to look and see if your eye is single. They're able to look and see if you have a sound eye. 
They're able to see, do you have divine wisdom, divine knowledge, divine counsel that you have yoked up or bound yourself to? Waking up every morning and agree and say, Father, I agree with your divine wisdom. And I would not lean to my human understanding because it's carnal. I agree with your divine instruction. I agree with your divine fear and respect and honor. Lord, your will and purpose be done by me. Okay, notice, I'm going to minimize my conversation of talking with you because the prince, a territorial ruler of the earth realm, who is known also as the prince of the air. I'm sorry, Ephesians 2 and 2. He come through our neighborhoods. He come through our home. And he come he, and he look and see, and he can tell if you are in Christ or not. Because we was once in his kingdom. Remember, we got transferred out, or translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light. He knew that once your life, he was in your house. But once he get put out, the Bible said the spirits will go out into dry places looking for rest and find none. And they'll say to themselves, I'm going to go back to the house in which I was once in. So I want you to understand about learning who's over your eye. What type of anointing? Is it a dark anointing? Is it a dark anointing? Understanding. I'm seeing the Bible fulfill itself. It says darkness shall cover the earth. Misery shall cover the earth. Ignorance shall cover the earth. Everything that's hideous and indignant is covering the minds of people like never before. Such like we call it an anatomical darkness of killing. What they're doing to the Asian people at this time, that's wickedness. That's gross darkness covering the earth, smearing on the minds of people. I ha he says, and has nothing in me. This spirit that's coming through, he named him as the prince of this world, which is the same as the rule of darkness, which is the same as the prince of the air. He have nothing in me. We have nothing in common. We have nothing in common. We have nothing in in common, nothing in me. He have no involvement with me. I have no involvement with him. But he can sense that spirit coming. That's why your anointing got to be important for your mind. It's going to be important for your walk. It's going to be important for your family. It's going to be important for the days in which we're in. Because he's moving through a territory that he's been allowed to move in. That's why I said you can't bind the devil because he's free to move about up and down in the earth realm. This is why it's going to be important that you understand your anointing of might. Might is dudamus power that you have as a student of the word. A student that study the word, a workman that need not be ashamed or embarrassed or humiliated, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We are to always remain upon the divine guidance, which the Holy Spirit is here to give us every day, divine guidance, and fill us afresh each and every day, renew our strength in the things of God. So I wanted you to see that piece. Now, notice, this eye is very carnal, very demonic. It's a natural part of the human. Now, let's look at what this eye is about. This eye, understand what it sees. It has members. These are all members now. I pray you can appreciate this PowerPoint. I pray that it's clear. Every I have members. Your new I or your renewed I have new members. I won't go to that one, but I'm showing you now adultery. I'm going to go back and forth. Because adultery is in the I, it's going to take what to do it. It's going to take knowledge to do adultery. You can't do adultery without knowledge. But what type of knowledge do I have? Demonic knowledge. Earthly, sensual, and devilish. So the rule of darkness will make sure that you and I will fulfill the work for I had an eye for this. Eye of sexual immorality. Eye for fornication. Eye of uncleanliness, lewdness, wickedness, pedophile, pedophilia, on every level, bestiality, which they call zoophilia, 
as well as homosexuality, lesbianism. That's a part of our human nature. All of this, the human nature has an eye for these things. It has an eye for hatred. You can't do hatred without a demonic wisdom. The demonic wisdom will show you how to hate someone on a first degree, third degree, second degree uh, malice. Uh, even as they're dealing with the court now of George Floyd, uh, they want to get a third degree, a lesser charge, because they're trying to act if though he didn't do this out of malice or ill will or intent. It was accidental. So therefore, there was no malice in this. Well, his eye with his knee upon George's neck for eight minutes had to do with an evil eye. He had an anointed darkness that smeared on him, though the people were shouting to him, saying what they were saying, he would not really remove his foot or his knee off George Floyd's neck for eight minutes. This is what we mean by an evil eye, very darkness. Remember Matthew says, if the eye be single, if the eye be dark, evil, then the eye is dark. Uh, if it's evil, it is a light of darkness. I'm saying it like this so you get it. The eye, the mind is evil. So that officer was kneeling down on his neck with an evil, dark eye. He said, if the eye be dark, how great is the darkness? Okay? Now, understanding that this, this officer is up under the mammon God. I'm talking about things that I've already taught you, so you can go back and look at it in Matthew 6, 22, 23, and 24. Now, he's up under demonic influence. So George Floyd is going to die that day because of an evil eye. You see, murder is there. Murder, homicide, suicide. What type of murder do we have here? Did he just die, natural causes? No, he didn't. Did he die by self-immutilation? No, he didn't. He died by the knee of a police officer who rested on his knee, on his neck for eight minutes. So you see, with an evil eye, it takes knowledge to do what he did. It took counsel to do. The advice was do not remove, do not remove your knee from him. He remained with his hands in his pocket and he pressed up on his neck. That's an evil eye. Well, husbands, wives, brothers and sisters, this is why you want to become saved and born again. Because God come to deliver me from a wretched man that I am. This is a wretched me, a wretched you. When we was in darkness, he transferred us out of the darkness or translated us from the darkness and brought us into the kingdom called the marvelous light. Now we have a transformed mind. Now the mind have a single eye. What do you see in your eye? I see joy. I see love. I see brotherly kindness. I see long suffering. I see gentleness. I see meekness. If you see hate in your eye, then it tells you you have been smeared with a darkness that blinded you, where you, I hear saints all the time, I, I, I can't love them. Where what, you can't? You can't be, you can't unconditionally love this person? I hate them. Well, you can only do or be what's according to your mind. My dad used to say to me all the time, he said, boy, he said, I think, I, I, I was thinking you was going to change. I, I was hoping you'd get better. He said, but you know what? You know more than your mind. You can't do no better because that's your mind. He said, that's your eye, other words, what I'm saying now. He said, that's your intelligence. That's your mentality. You really can't do no better. And that's what you see. Until God deliver us, no, you can shout and preach and sing and choirs and come to church all we want to. Until we become born again, our nature is very demonic. And this is why we're looking at the evil eye. Now, you can't keep both of these eyes and be true to God. You're going to have to choose. We're going to have to choose, okay? So everything you see here is called a member. And the member that you're looking at, I, I put them here because Galatians talks about it, Colossians talks about it, Mark chapter 7 talks about it. So if you write this down, the PowerPoint is up there, write it down, and so you can pay attention and look at your own self. And I've used this to look at my own self. The Holy Ghost have birthed me and taught me and brought me into the things of the light of the truth, because it's not about robes and pulpit. It's not about sounding like a preacher. It's about living as a king who's born again in my priesthood. The Bible calls us now kings and priests, meaning that you're now of a royal priesthood, people of an elegant behavior, 
mindset of words and deeds and conduct that we operate in. So tonight, I pray you can appreciate these pieces that I'm giving you. I wanted to give you somewhat of a, uh, an example so you can understand when we talk about members. These are actually called members. Each member has an affinity for us. They like us. They know us. They contact us. Uh, murder will contact you. Uh, uh, envy will contact you. Uh, reveling, parting will contact you. Malice will contact the mind. It will contact us and let us know these are the voices in our head. So therefore, being purged and being born again, then you and I will be a people who modify, put to death these very members. They have actually ruined a lot of homes, a lot of marriages, a lot of relationships, a lot of churches have been ruined because a lot of us walk around with a double mind. And Paul says, and James says, to be double-minded, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Paul said to be carnal-minded is death, to have this very mind with seven eyes that are demonic, who have all these different members, and these members is what you and I walk around fulfilling the lust by the guidance of the ruler of darkness, according to the course of this world. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, and understand. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. This is what it says. Let's do 1 and 2. Yes, and I know I'm being redundant. In all of our getting, get an understanding. This is revelation, revealed knowledge for you, the believer, that really want to live right. Those who want to live foul and continue in sin, then this won't be any good to you because you want to live with two minds. You want to live with God and mammon. You can't have God and mammon. You have to choose. You're hauled it between two opinions. You're going to have to decide who you're going to serve, who you're going to live for. So it says in Ephesians 1, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, and you has he quickened, quickened me made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin. That was me with this evil eye. That was me with adultery, fornication. That was me. That was my lifestyle. My daddy had it. My brothers had it. We all had the same vices by the human, curled, savage bloodline. Reveling, party life. That was my members that was in my eye. I understood how to do all the darkness because of the anointing that was smeared on me was of darkness. Satan covers everything he touches. You got to understand that. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 60, I believe, he says that darkness covered the earth and gross darkened the people. We'll get a chance to go there right quick before I leave here. He says, where in time past, verse 2, where in time past, when you look at your former days, walked according to the course of this world. You're looking at a course of my world. You know, people ask the question all the time, and I like to teach on this, about where do homosexuality come from? It comes from within us. Where do adultery come from? The heart. Jeremiah says in 17.9, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? Do you know how dark we are? That's why he said we must be born again. And so we've been teaching on these eyes so you can see. The eye is nothing more than the mind. It's not a left eye and a right eye I'm talking about. I'm talking to your mind. And who's standing behind your mind? What's standing behind you? What rule is behind our mind? What anointing that's smeared on us? Because there's a burning inordinate affection that you wake up with, you lay down with. It'll give you dreams. It'll give you thoughts. It'll give you ideals that are so ungodly. But now that I'm, I'm in Christ, I loose myself, and I, and, I, and I modify the flesh, and I hate my flesh because I'm born again. Notice, he says, where in time past you walked according to the course of a beaten path of this world. My daddy walked it, my brother walked it, we walked it. I don't know my grandfather. Perhaps he walked it because we was of a bloodline. We were self-indulging in ourselves. He says, according to the prince of the what? Power of the air. Now, outside of Christ, you're no match. I used to say, this is my last time. I'm not lying. I'm not going to do that no more. Oh, you are a slave to sin. And that's why so many in Christ now saying, ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. You make an excuse. Nobody's mature. Nobody's developing. Nobody's growing up. We're wasting time coming to church. You're wasting time reading your Bible. If you're not developing and putting on Christ, you're taking off an old man and putting on a new man. You're taking off an old eye and putting on a new eye. Come on. 
No. Prince of the air, power of air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. This is study tonight. This is something you can read and pick up your Bible and go and look and study. If you get your good reference power, it's going to help you. Okay? I want to look at a piece in Isaiah chapter 60, I believe. Uh, bear with me. And this is uh, chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 and 2, two verses, and we're going to stop here. He says, if you're there with me, because all this has to do when the dark world is moving, is going to contact everybody of a evil eye. Yeah, you're going to be in contact with a spirit called the prince of the air. In Christ, we are always contacted by the voice of the prince of peace. Emmanuel, Christ Jesus, the anointed one, the Messiah, that's who rules over us, his spirit. Now, he says, arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The light is come. The light of knowledge and intelligence has come into me. I can say this because I can look at the evil eye and see how I used to be and who I am today. Verse 2, for behold, darkness covers the earth. It smears the earth. It blankets the earth. It smears. It besmears the earth. Darkness, misery, misery of hatred, misery of uncleanliness, misery of fornication. All of this darkness, murder covers the earth. Strife covers the earth because of evil eyes. He says, this is what Jesus says. He said, you have your father, the devil, and his works you do. Then he says, and gross darkness, the people. Darkness covers the earth, blanket the earth. Then it says growth, that's another measure of darkness that covers the earth. We're in perilous times. So I want you to understand the eye. So put this together. He says, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. See, if your eye is single, when you open your mouth, God's glory, God's honor, God's praise, God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's counsel, God's understanding, God's strength, the whole is going to be seen upon you. And it's not our clothes. It's not our suit. God's glory will be seen coming out of your mouth. God's glory will be seen coming out of your conversation, which is your conduct. How you treat that person, you won't treat them with a sour touch. You will treat them with a loving touch because God has shown us how to love him and how to love one another. Brothers and sisters, I pray tonight this PowerPoint has helped you. You guys let me know how it, it, it be a, that is a blessing. I pray it's clear. I pray it just simplified the teaching because, again, I have no books to sell you. Nothing that I say is for sale. It was revealed to me, and I'm revealing it to you because that's my job. If you want it, it's going to be medicinal for you. It's going to help you to heal and be a better person because these are things you're going to loose yourself from. We talk about binding and loose. Loose yourself from this evil eye. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your word and your word falling upon the ground called good ground. Father, we know good grounds will bring a return 60, 30, 100 fold. And Father God, the ground that's called stony ground, we know they receive the word gladly, but they don't re remain in the relationship. Father God, have mercy upon them and help them. Whoever is allowing the word to be choked out of them, this night I pray they make up their mind to break up their foul ground, break up that hard ground, and return to you with all their heart, soul, and mind. Have mercy, Father God, as you see the days ahead. You know the next events that's coming our way, storms, earthquake, pestilence, whatever it may be. We ask that you hide us in your secret place. Father God, fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Let not that husband remain the same that was listened to your word tonight. Let not that wife remain the same, but let them become a glorious church. Let their eye become single, whole, and healthy. Let it be a healthy husband and a healthy wife, a healthy son and a healthy daughter. Healthy brothers, sis, brothers and sisters, let them be found, God, throughout the earth realm like never before. These blessings we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good night to you.